Hello there, everyone, and thank you for joining me here at the start of a new campaign in Old World Blues, the A to Z series, in which we're playing as the Free Fighters. Now, I've played as them before, but apparently back in the day, they were called the Luchadores Libres, which uh, took me a while to figure out uh, why they were not called Free Fighters, but they're in English. We have Las Tres Mascaras. Oh, God. We get, like, no political power. When the masked tribes united to fight against the cartels plaguing Los Mocas and the surrounding lands, it was these three who acted as a binding force. Mil Mascaras, the Green Titan, take care of masks. The bullfighter himself, bringing strength and courage to the tribes, the Blue Devil. Once a sworn enemy of the tribes, his cunning hit and run tactics and powerful weapons dealing a great blow to the cartel and forces. And the father of it all, El Santo, virtuous warrior, pure of heart, mind and soul, bringer of justice and defender of the weak. It was he who stood first stood up to the Sinaloa. And it was he who drove the Beltran into the southern jungles. Together, they make for an uneasy, if powerful team, but the hero of uh, Los Mocas. Which I'm sure I'm saying wrong. Thirty years after the end of the rule, a small tribal community is terrorized and enslaved by local banditos. However, the situation changes when a lone figure in a white mask wanders into town. And then the bastard of Guamuchul. The turn of El Santo and a sacrifice would go to inspire a great trouble uprising, one that broke the cartel into two and united the desperate people to the Sinaloa under one banner, with a singular exception of one water band, but the last of the Tutor. Thirty years after the end of the world, a small tribe of communities terrorized and enslaved by local banditos. However, the situation changes when a lone figure in a white mask wanders into town and dares to challenge the banditos. Despite a lot, the figure drives uh, off the banditos, only to succumb to his wounds in the aftermath of the battle. His sacrifice would inspire generations of tribes to take up masks and fight their oppressors, with his dying words carrying them into the future. Memories of justice. Shelter for the weak. 5% defense bonus. Um, civilian factor construction bonus? There's only city stuff. I'm gonna go with Memories of Justice. The monster of Kulikan. The arrival of the Great Wander broke was uh, a turning point amongst the warring tribes of uh, the Free Fighters. <coughs> Excuse me. Return of the Demon. Over a century later, El Santo would return. Despite years of oppression and brutality under the cartels, the Saints' arrival would go on to inspire a tribal uprising that would shatter the cartel into exile defeat, but not all would join El Santo's crusade. A war band of tribes refused to accept the Saint to Savior, adopting the mask and fashioning themselves after the blue demon that once challenged El Santo, forcing the Saint to share power with Demonio Azul, the ruthless leader of the blue demon cult, a villain for every tale. Honor to a point. Well, we got more defense. Let's go with attack. Let's go with that one. And the tag team of the century. The last match for leadership of the three fighters and with no clear winner, and yet it remains the greatest match the Federation has ever seen. A monster with a hundred masks. The arrival of the Great Wander broke the uneasy status quo for this great foe was greater than any who had come to threaten them before. Easily defeating several chiefs in single combat, the monster claimed the masks of his defeated foes, establishing himself as a new leader of the tribes. To all inquired, he made his goals clear. He sought to form an army with which to defeat the Legion of the Far North, and the challenge to rule of both El Santo and the Blue Demon to go on, or to do so. A new homeland. No more fear. Well, we haven't done this one too much, so we're gonna go with this one. And we only get, what, 0 .08 political power a day. Holy crap. That's not good. But love Dr. Gonzalez. Augustin Kosterlitsky. Melkor Vasquez de la Cadena. Friends in high places with Jose Carranza. Well, I like political power the most. It's not bad, I like that. Beep, beep. So that's not bad. Over here, do we have anyone interesting? Kind of generic stuff. This is uh, not bad to get either. Um, it's okay. We have Tlaloc's Technation. Um, oh, yeah, we have all the Mexican stuff here, too, for major businesses. 5% more political power, which is not bad. 5%, but I think point. What do we get here is better. But, you know what, just in case, we're going to go with Land Auction. Anyways, because we don't need Army XP. Uh, what are we going to do next? Well, the Division in the Federation. Not everyone accepted the results, so they get a right to match, and the leadership of the Triarchy, now even now. Talk circulates among the tribe, questioning the fitness of Latres, Las Tres Mascaras to lead the Federation. That Lucho Rambo. The uneasy, tripartite leadership of the Federation has caused a headache for the Free Fighters, with the three strong personalities often butting heads and fists over the direction of the young nation. While their legendary first bout ended in a draw, the time has come to settle old grudges, and a series of three-way grand matches have been planned to decide the leadership of the Federation. After each match, each victor will take the reins of the Federation until a final winner takes all to take a grand slam of the century. How exciting. 
the tag team of the century, the last match for leadership of the Free Fighters, <clears throat> ended with no clear winner. And yet it remains the greatest match the Federation has ever seen. El Santo and the Blue Demon face each other in the Los Mocos ring, trading blow for blow, just as El Santo was the claim victory from the crowd's emerging green giant himself. Mel Mascara leaped into the ring, and was to the combined power that the Blue Demon and El Santo were able to force him to a draw. When the rest had settled on the ruined remains of what had once been the Los Mocos ring, a new fellowship was formed. Las Tres Mascaras would rule the Federation as equals until they face each other in the ring again. What a match. And we're going to grab more political power because I want it. Yay. And then we're going to grab more political power because I want it. Yay. And now, doing that, we get point two six, which is not great. But it's better than, what we're, than we were at. And we're getting army XP. So that's really the big one. Getting army XP is really the biggest one you want to get. Um, so we're using Old World Blues, Old World Blues Radio, Old World Blues Tech Expanded, um, Old World Blues... Generic decisions are reworked, Old World Blue, yes, Tech Expanded, and I think Fast Justifications as well. Match 1. Choose your fighter. With about drawing near, all three mascaras prepared for the showdown. El Santo has taken to the hills, turning in solitude and strengthening his nigh-impenetrable defense. The Blue Demon is uh, alternating between the ring and the workshop, fine-tuning his power fist and preparing his infamous side sweeps. Milma scarce has challenged all comers to the public arena, honing his fists in brutal attacks designed to overwhelm his opponent. While all three will enter the arena on equal footing, the position of the first entrance for match one is a prestigious position, and the Federation is yet to decide who will take this honor. El Santo, the Blue Demon, uh, will take the first entrance, or Mel Mascaras will take the first position. So, I played as the Luchadores Libres before, and I went with, I think, the Blue Demon, Bittersweet Victory. So, we're not going to go with the Blue Devil for, for this route. Uh, I apologize. So, no Mel Mascaras. Yeah. Focus options, huh? Or the North. Um, so, we should go the Champion of the People. Uh, people. Demonio Azul. Wait, so this one, Mel Mascaras Tree, the B team, yeah. This is to all people, stoking the fires, raging against the tyrants, the Great Federation, or the High Flyer. Mel Mascaras has won the match. El Santo focuses. The Giants stand, land of the free, welcome refugees, volunteers. This one. Oh, the Triarchy has triumphed. Uh, El Santos won the final rematch, huh? Or the High Flyer. Mil Masqueras. Freedom's Ring. Defenders against these guys. Um, the Great Federation. By Fists Alone. Well, maybe we'll probably have to go with this. So, it requires a great rematch. El Santos won. El Santo. El Santo. Let him lead the match. The unbowed. Not all of the other tribes have accepted the role of Las Tres Mascaras. There remains just yet three groups who will need to unite under our banner. So what do we get these? Oh. The Lucho Rumble. The time draws near for another match between the Triarchy to have any chance of winning the upcoming bout. El Santo must train hard and prepare a sound strategy for the ring. Stamina 3. Ooh. Build up stamina. Ooh. Between offensive moves. So we get all this. Wild card. Moose is wild card moves, huh? Let's go with def defense and let's build up some stamina. Stamina and defense. We'll try it. And we have our three research slots, which kind of sucks. Not gonna lie. That really sucks. As we have division in the Federation, which is not good. Oh, never good. But we're doing okay with everything else. We have four divisions and they're not very good, I'll be honest. Mill Mascaras, sure, that's fine for now. Uh, do we have a person here? No. That's alright. Go and train. Well, I guess we can't really train. Convert them to normal guardia, which is still not that great. Kind of language, but division in the Federation. Not everyone has accepted the results of the great match. Even now, talk circulates among the tribe, questioning the fitness of Latres Mascaras to lead the Federation. Before the leadership of the Federation can be started once and for all, we must work together to unify our peoples. So, four, one, three, uh, wild card. Hearts and minds, people. Oh, crap. Well, that's not good. And I guess we have a ship here, too. Anyone with a mask? Yeah! Admiral An Angel Pedraza. Approach Shadow Walkers. Uh, let's see, anything else unlocked? Nope. Approach Medicinas. The Two Faced Warriors. Uh, medical Technology, Breakthrough, Super, Mil Super Mute Auxiliars. That's different. Uh, I guess we're going to go with this guy with El Santo, maybe. Yeah. Doctrines from Experience. Yeah. 
more stability, but you lose... Oh, you know... Oh. Division of the Federation. Well, we probably want to go that way next. Approach the Shadow Walkers. 60-day focus. Oh, my God. The Shadow Walkers worship the Black Sun, an ancient evil who is said to have done battle with El Santo on numerous occasions, only to eventually be defeated by the great hero of old. This deity, being at so odds with our own, keeps relations tense. However, with the rise of the cartel, such as the clandestine ally, would prove useful. We need more war support to make sure we get this higher. 4 one, three, two. Next match. Oh, boy. Hope we do well. We can close out this one for now. Um, here, increase the political power. That would be pretty nice to do, but that requires us to get to 75, which is going to take forever. So we can close out that one as well. Audio holotapes. We don't need those right now. Military industry. Yeah, oh my god. Oh, I didn't realize how bad her PP was. Don't you hate it when you have bad PP? Oh. Um, we're doing okay here. We do need to start working on our land auction, but we're going to go work as needed. Actually, for tech levels, where are we at? We're basic. On infantry stuff. We're terrible in support. Oh my god, I didn't realize how bad we were. Jesus Christ, this is so basic and primal. We are bound. Not all the Lucha tribes have accepted the rule of Las Tres Mascaras. Three groups yet remain who will need to under a banner Las Medicinas, the Shadow Walkers, and the Two Faced Warriors. Each of these tribes will need to be convinced to work with us one way or another. We're coming around eventually. Oh, are you kidding me, bruh? Bruh. Um, the Battle of Mazatlan. Shadow Walkers proved their worth alongside the Blue Demon against the cartels before facing the Bloody Bandit himself down in a raid on his lair. While the losses were severe, the secrets they stole and the knowledge of the cartel forces will prove invaluable to us upon their acceptance into the Federation. Um, we'll go with offense, which seems like that's probably a pretty good idea. The Shadow Brothers. It's time for us to, for us to ease the Shadow Walkers into the Federation. Due to this requires a match between one of our leaders, and theirs. This match will not be like others in the Federation. With a mix of underhanded tactics and hidden weapons, anyone could come out on top. El Santo, huh? Champion declared. Leonardo the Saint. Ooh. Today we celebrate the great original uh, El Santo. The motto came to our lands and drove out the wretched dudes of your brother's place, Um, who lorded over us. Parades run through the streets of Las Mocas and celebrations are held as the new statue of the saint is revealed in the town square. Also a tribal, I guess, you know, that makes sense. Corning costs, or getting that stuff here would be really good too. Um, God, it's weird. Oh, man, we got so much to do here. It's not even funny. We're going to be so far behind on stuff, it's not It's not good. It's not bueno. Uh, but we got to we did that. Not bad. Let's go with more defense. Oh, God. Next match. Here we go. Match one begin. The time has come for another legendary rumble between Las Tres Masqueras to determine the next interim leader of the Free Fighters. With all the three fighters having been training for the match, the upcoming fight is certain to be a showstopper, and spectators have arrived from the Cross Federation to cheer on their favorite. As the combatants cross the ropes to enter the ring, there's only one thing left to say. Let's get rid of Rumble. Oh, yeah. Uh, round one. The bell is rung, and the first round begins. All three fighters are keen to gain an early upper hand. In the circle of the center of the ring, waiting for the first blow to be struck, El Santo sees an opportunity, and striking first, opens with a volley of furious blows. Stays out of the scrum and holds back. Plays a wild card. We're going to play to our defensive strength. Round two. The bell rings, the first round is over, in the fury of the battle. Mil Mascaras decided to take the initiative, taunting both opponents to take him on. This showboat and get him nowhere, so both El Santo and Demonio Azul refuse to be drawn out, preferring to corral and harass the middle fighter while staying on the defensive. An exhausting game of cat and mouse ensued, and then left Mel Mascaras panting for breath in the middle of the ring, where both luchas gave their devastating retort. Having returned into the corners for a brief interlude, the three fighters are ready to take the fight to the second round. El Santo weighs his options and decides. Attack? To watch for his weakness and stay on the defensive. To play the ring and prepare to, f uh, stay prepared to faint. Stay on the defensive for now. Because <clears throat> that's our strongest thing. Round three. The second round is over and the hits are beginning to take their toll. Feeling the pressure, Mel Mascaras decided to take the initiative, taunting both opponents to take them on. This showboating got him nowhere as both El Santo and Demonio Azul refused to be drawn out, preferring to corral and harass them again. Uh, I read this again, so. Knowing that, that this is his last shot at taking victory, El Santo pulls all his strength into one final move. All for one, Sinaloa Smash, the Atalan Cotan, Infinite Fistworks. Sinaloa Smash sounds like fun. <coughs> match 2, the final bell. The bell is rung and the match is over. In the final moment of the match, all three fighters leapt into the center of the ring in a blind display of unbridled violence, ready for a fierce assault. The fist flew fast and free as all three masks committed themselves to the offensive, each taking near as many hits as they give. But as the dust settles, it can only be one victor, and the last mark standing is 
The money Azul. Demon's cult. No one! And the course even declared a draw. Oh. That's stress must care, six reigns. Ah, so. The demon call, huh? Oh, I'm gonna go with El Santo. And declare a draw. The triarchy returns. That'd be nice if we could get rid of it. As long as it's not this guy, that's all I care about. El Santo, huh? Mil Mosqueras. The devil. El Santo. Or, oh, oh, or we could bypass it. Ooh, that's true. The demon cults. Um, demons. So we go with that one. Well, let's see what the... Well, we'll say first and see what it's like. Um, Demonio Azul, huh? We do that one. We're led by this guy, who is over here. Um, I guess we have to... You have to wait, because he, he, can, he can be leading us for now, but the demon, when you are faced with adversity, you only one task that you owe yourself. An honorable defeat leads nowhere but death and suffering. I know Diablo Azul knows this. He knows the cartel is played by rules that the honorable could not comprehend, and that's what only leads to defeat. His reputation is underhanded, and cunning both wins within the ring and without, serves him well, catching his enemy on the off-footing. Demonio Azul takes the reins. Demonio Azul has won the match and taken temporary leadership of the Federation until the next Rumble. With his opponents to hold great sway over the Free Fighters, Demonio Azul now has the opportunity to pursue his own designs for the nation, also preparing for the next battle against his foes. Till the next match. Hey, got some stability. Um, you know what? We're going to maximize that immediately. So now we get 2.41 every day. Nice. That's pretty good. Weekly political power, stability, uh, worship goes down, which is not ideal. The next match, we got to wait. Uh, okay, high party promotion stuff. That's fine for now, too. Who do we have here? Oh. Honorable Surgeon, Rivera, Dos Arellano. Crusher. Hey, you wonder about this place? Go ahead, and the heavens entered. Nice. Keep the ritual. Yeah, I got some really good guys here. Dealing with the Shadow Walkers, though. The Shadow Walkers worship the Black Sun, an ancient evil who is said to have done battle with El Santo on numerous occasions, only to eventually be defeated by the great hero of old. Traditionally unwilling to work with the Federation, the recent addition of the Blue Demons has opened up unexpected dialogue with the, the Shadow Walkers, where the patron god is once said to have worked closely with the Blue Demon. The Shadow Walkers are willing to side with the Federation, provided the Blue Demon cult pushed to earn them pardons for various crimes they committed in their long history of wars with the cult of El Santo. While the cult of the Saints is willing to make some sacrifices, they are unwilling to pardon them all. Cruz. Oh god. Oh god, which one do we want? Ortiz. Oh, that's not bad. Resistance record goes way down. Or Cruz. As a military high commander. Ooh, special. Special forces capacity multiplier? Is that supposed to be a thousand percent, really? Oh man, I like the other one a lot. Oh, but a thousand percent. Is that really that as much as we need? Six, okay, well. Is that really real? Approach Medicinas. The Medicinas are the second most respected tribe in the entire Federation. Well, they would be, they just actually chosen to join it. The peace mongering ways made them very apprehensive about joining in on the quest to remove the cartels. The Demon and the Nightmare. In the final traditional act upon the Shadow Walkers into the Federation, a public combat must be held between the two leaders of the tribe and another. In time on a tradition, the Blue Demon step forward to challenge a shadow or black shadow intent on defeating him in a swift and decisive way. The brawl is unlike most in the Federation as it makes use of extensive outside equipment and interference, even as both parties wear armor and bring hidden weapons into the fray. When the dust finally settles, the Blue Demon stands triumphant over his foe and the Black Shadow formally joins the Federation, once he recovers from his broken arm, of course. The Shadow walk among us, so we get anti-tank rifles, reconnaissance companies, do we get two Shadow Warriors, six infantry divisions with anti-tank and recon support in Los Mocas. Nice, so at least we get some free research out of this. Two divisions, they're all right. We'll deal with them for now. Cool. Oh, we made a purchase with caps, and we're currently doing approaching medicinas, medicinas, which I read earlier. So, um, but we're going to finish this one. But we got to do two face warriors just because. Well, we got that one, and we got to get rid of the war sport going down, which is destroying our command power game. The two luchadors of the two face tribe are a proud pair, worshiping one dos caras. 
was thought to be the best lucha of his age. These two resist joining the Federation because of the pride. So it's about time we knocked him down a peg, so. And we have the match two beginning right now. I uh, did a little bit of off screen just just because, and we're really good in defense, so. Um, let's see. If you want to read about this one, please go ahead. Let's get ready to rumble. I think it's pretty much the same. I could be wrong. Dia de los Muertos. If you want to read about this, please go ahead, please. Thank you. And uh, so we're going to do. We are definitely going to do uh, what we need to to say well with El Santo again. Stay out of the scrum and hold back. So. And here. Uh, we are actually, for our land auction, we're actually going Ace Match Warfare, which is one I don't normally do. We're going to go down with Ancient Tactics, just because we can. Luchadores using a Roman Tactics. Perfect. Bottle Caps, Army XP Gain, Technological Breakthrough. Probably do the same for that one. So, um, so I mean, the bell rings and the first round is over. In the fury of the battle, the fighters stay in the corners, unwilling to commit to an attack in fear of overextending. Well, a few cautious jabs were traded and plenty of evasive footwork was on display. The end result was a disappointing non-starter that left a lot to be desirable. After turning to the corners for a brief interlude, the free fighters, three fighters, are ready to take the fight to the uh, second round. Now it's not the ways his options are decides. Attack. Stay prepared to faint. Watch out for weaknesses and stay on the defensive. I'm not sure how we're actually supposed to run this. So I maxed out uh, defense. Uh... The second round is over, and the hits are beginning to take their toll. Feeling the pressure, both El Santo and Demonio Azul, which is a blue demon, sought to use the rounds the moment of respite, of respite to gain strength for the continued battle, and stay defensive, but Mil Mascaros was having none of it. Deftly playing against his enemy's weaknesses, Mil Mascaros broke through their defenses like a knife through the hot butter, keeping both luchas exhausted and on the back step until the end of the round. Knowing that this was his last shot of victory, El Santo pulled all the strength into one final move, all for one single smash, which we did last time, the Atslan Curtain, Infinite Fist Works. Let's go with the Aslan Curtain this time. Let's see what happens. Oops. Ah, uh, the final bell. The bell is rung and the match is over. In the final moments of the match, both El Santo and Demonio Azul sought to use the round as a moment of respite. Uh, we read this one earlier. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, definitely playing against his enemy's weaknesses, Mil Mascaros broke through the defense like a but knife through hot butter, keeping both Lucius exhausted and on the back step until the end of the round. But as the dust settles, there can only be one victor and the last mask standing is... Mil Mascaras, Ruler Party. This likes the uh, Legion. The Giant. Ta more attack. Oh. Mil Mascaras again. Interesting. El Santo. Mil Mascaras. Takes reins. He's won the match and is temp taking temporary leadership of the Federation until the next Rumble. While his opponents still hold great sway over the Free Fighters. Mel Mascaras now has the opportunity to pursue his own designs for the nation, also preparing for the next bout against his foes, until the next match. Nice. Even though we could use way more war support now. Peace over war. Mm. Political power. Okay. Uh, expand army training. That's not bad. Honestly, we're not at war. I don't mind spending that. That's actually worth it. Because that'll help just shoot up how much daily army XP we're getting. Which is something we could use. Yes, today's Mascaras. I think to the gods. Um, thanks for the free food. Yeah! So what are we going to do with our PP? Air technology wouldn't be bad. Uh, actually, what are we missing here? We're missing some motorized vehicles. We're pretty green on everything else, but we haven't expanded our divisions just yet. So we should probably wait for that. We can close out of that. We can close out of that. That's fine. Approaching the Medicinas, which I'm sure I'm saying wrong. Yeah. Hmm. Alright, go faster. The Medicinas are, after all, the followers of El Santo. The most beloved of the free fighter tribes in the eyes of the kind of people under their protection. Which is why their refusal to join the Federation has caused such turmoil in the lands. The Medicinas worship the long lost doctor of Wagner, a philanthropist, a wrestler from long before the war, and follow in his footsteps by offering med medical treatments and charity work to those who need it. Among the tribes, they are easily the least interested in aggressive expansion or open conflict with their foes. It can be none other than El Santo who must bridge the gap with his tribe and stress upon the importance of protecting others. Agrees. Gonzalez Rivera. Honorable Surgeon Rivera agrees. Oh god. So, Rivera, more organization and recovery, which is pretty good. Or Gonzalez. We could crush her here too. Or Gonzalez, where is Gonzalez? A oh, beloved doctor. So, be way better resistance target and research speed. That's actually pretty strong, more research speed and resistance. Rivera. Do we have anyone else here? Who's unique? That's not super unique. It's good. Well, more attack and defense. 
I don't know, we could probably do this one, Rivera. I like the organization. That's good for attack and defense. Whoopsie. My bad. My finger slipped. Literally. Um, we can, you know what? I'm going to grab him anyways right now just because I know if I forget, because I will forget. Oh, God. Do I even want to... We could send volunteers, I guess, but, like, do I want to? I mean, we still get army speed no matter what, even if we don't, so... Sorry, ranchers, but there's really not too much of a point for us to send stuff to you. Sorry. Not really. Um, anyways, 14 combat with... So, these are guys are 12. I'd rather just have everyone do this. And have anti-tank, which we need to research. And recon. We need fire teams, we need demo teams, because it'll save us on army XP. So... So, you're done. Everyone's gonna become a Shadow Warrior now. And we're gonna have to research more stuff, aren't we? Yes, we will. Legends of the Monsters. The part of our plan to chip away the pride and imagined superiority of the two masks is to spread rumors of our own. Uh, Mil Miscatus. By circulating legends of a warrior twice the size of a man who's always ready for a fight, we can lure them into wanting a match with us. A triple threat, of course. The clock strikes three, and so begins the match between Mil Miscatus and the Dos Brothers. With the Green Titan being twice the size of a normal man, the twins have requested uh, that they wrestle together. A request from El Santo has granted knowledge, or knowing very well, that it won't save them from being humbled. So, um... I think he's read this same one as last time, so... Mill the Mosquitoes one last time. Can we do... the... Uh, little rumble with these guys? Can can he win? No, we're gonna focus on offense. Screw everything else. Offense, it is. For him. Um, population would be nice. Uh, but like I said, we need... Oh, we already have anti-tank research. Oh, we should be making it then. What are we doing? Oh, we don't have that research. Oh god, that's not gonna be good for us. Um... There you go. Ta-da! Yay. This one's okay. It's not great. Organization loss from below 25%. That's not much. Division defense of core territory. It's okay. This one's definitely better. It's much more for finally. Better recovery rate. Better HP. More recruitable population factor. Non-combat out of supplies penalties, which is not bad. It's okay. Scavenging efforts. Um, I want to beeline and get more political power, maybe... Uh, we're doing okay. We really need to focus more on industry for now, too. Because we're... Honestly, we are a little rough. We are a little rough. Um, honestly... We have 1% war support. That is really just not ideal. At all. Oops. Well, let's go with the land auction. Why not? Twinned Trouble. <clears throat> oh, actually. Mel Mascaris is currently the leader. Ooh, can we get him done, though, by the end of this? The Gigante Verde Cult is a group worshipping its namesake, Verde. Mostly comprised of semi-intelligent super mutants. The only thing stopping them from joining the Federation is mutant bias on their side and an easily suplexed bias, that is. Twinned Trouble. The two face tribe worships. Uh, Dos Caras, also known as Two Masks, who is said to have been one of the largest, most powerful wrestlers of his age. It is pride that keeps them from bowing to the Federation and an unrelenting belief in their own superiority. Mel Mascaras, whose namesake once did battle on the side of Dos Caros, Car uh, Caras, believes that the easiest way to bring the twin chieftains into the fold is to defeat the members of the tribe one by one in order to assert dominance. Great Dos Arano bows to the Federation. Mighty Dos Rodriguez bows to the Federation. Well, I mean, we already have two people here. So get more attack and defense with uh, this guy, or Dos Rodriguez. No, we didn't, can't, we didn't choose that guy last time. Or, uh, oh, right here. Hmm. So that seems okay. I think we'll probably use Dos Rodriguez as, for now, at the very, very least. So I'm not sure if we can get all the way through here. That'd be nice. But, uh, I guess we'll see. Forty-five days is a long time, though. Let's get more army XP that way. Point to one seven, which is going to come in handy later on. Um, how much money do we have? That's an okay amount. It's not great. Mm. You're going to be inspirational. But I don't know if we could choose that. I want this to be more offensive, but, uh... I guess not. Lots of my trading? It might not be too bad, either. Go 
because of the super mutants. Oh, there's Petro Chico. Travel buffs, oh god, where is this? Legion, Oregon, Texan, Mexican buffs. Jungle, rough terrain. That's how it does. Reckless aggression. Actually, that hurts uh, our defense. 10%, not good. Where is it? Travel buffs. It's somewhere here. Mave Brotherhood. Guild Scribes. Monsters, Plants, and Nightkins. Oh! If we wanted them. You know, just because we can. Heavyweight champions? Well, they recently integrated Super Mutants of the Gigante Vericolta in a boon for the wrestling matches. Uh, as for the fights that happen, we can get a greater understanding and appreciation of these fleshy titans and how they can help us fight the cartels. Oh, yes, please. And we have the last fight in a few days that we can't even do anything for. How great. How flippin' fantastic. Uh, I could get more workshops, I guess. Hippies, armed workshops, naval bases. Not. I mean, it's, it's good to have, and we need these. But, oh, there's a research slot we can grab too. But, it seems to be taking a while to get down there. Sun Eater, huh? The Warrior Champion. Cult of the Sun Eater. Viva la Revolución. Undermining Sol. Rising Sun. Coastal Anticipation, Northern Lime, The Gentle Day, Bait of Enter del Sol. Match begins. Um, I'll see, the time's come for sure for another legendary rumble between the Lost Threats and Mascaras to determine the next interim leader of the three fighters. With all the three fighters having trained for each match, or the match, the upcoming uh, fight is certain to be a showstopper, and Spectres have, have arrived from the Crest Federation to cheer on their favorite. As combatants across the ropes enter the ring, there's only one thing left to say. Let's get ready to rumble. Once again, well, we're gonna wait because I want to make sure we get this other focus done first before we actually choose that. So, which we actually, honestly, we should be good, anyways, because we're gonna get that one done. <clears throat> the bell has rung, and the first round begins as all three fires are keen to keep it, uh, gain an early upper hand and circle this end of the ring, waiting for the first blow to be struck. El Santo sees an opportunity and striking first, opens with a volley of furious blows. Round two. The bell rings and the first round is over. Uh, let's read this. Let's go this one. Um, in the fury of the battle, El Santo readied his fists and launched a furious onslaught against Demonio Azul, who chose to meet him in kind, exchanging rapid blows and devastating swings. Mel Mascaras attempted to take advantage of this. I was ready to jump slam the two fighters, but was rudely countered by an impromptu alliance, as both combatants chose to direct their blows against a hapless interloper. While there was no outright winner, it's clear that Mel Mascaras lost this round. I have returned to the corners for a brief interlude. The three fighters are ready to take the stand, take the fight of the second round. El Santo weighs his options decides. Well, I mean, we're going to be offensive, be aggressive. The second round is over, and the heads are beginning to take their toll. Feeling the pressure, all three fighters leapt into the center of the ring in a blind display of unbridled violence, ready for a fierce assault. The fists flew fast and free as all three masks committed themselves to the offensive, knowing each taking as many hits as they gave, knowing that this was his last shot taking victory. El Santo pulls all the strength into one final move. Infinite fist works. Final bell. The bell is rung and the match is over. In the final moments of the match, El Santo and Demonio Azul decide to empty up this round, join together to take down Milma Skirts with an audacious display of skill and lunacy. Unfortunately, the Luchador's super secret moves were more flash than bang, and while attempting to throw Demonio Azul at Mascaras as a projectile, El Santo stumbled and fell, leaving both attackers reeling on the ground, where Milma Mascaras mopped the floor with them. But as the dust settles, there can only be one victor, and the last ma mask standing is. Um, Mil Mascaras takes the reins. No one matches inconclusive and declared a draw. Uh, we cannot get El Santo here. Triarchy returns. Let's see what that one's. Like. Well, it's going to be able to find a clear victor. Las Tres Mascaras has agreed to return to three-way leadership. Well, each match was glorious to watch, and the respect that these fighters have for each other has only grown through battle. The issue of our nation's leadership remains, of course, unresolved. So the triple threat. Um, did we read this one? Yeah. So we'll do that one too, because we gotta get down here. Funding the Wagner Hospital. The Wagner Hospital, named after the Medicinas on Dr. Wagner, is a purported, purposed a medical facility in Las Colinas. If built to plan, it would be the biggest facility in all the Federation, and maybe even Mexico. Putting a little funding towards this venture would surely smooth things over with the Medicinas. The Twins and the Giant After feeding the majority of the elders within the two-faced warriors, Mil Mascaras challenged the twin leaders of the tribe to combat. 
However, to take them both at the same time for the sake of fairness. This match takes place in the center of the Federation's greatest camp, under the watchful eyes of every chief who's bowed to the Federation thus far. Though valiant, even the mighty twins can hope to match up to the raw physical might to the super mutant in unarmed combat, and are both defeated when de a devastating slam renders one of the brothers unconscious, and the other pinned beneath his massive frame. Where the prides firmly check, the two-faced warriors agree to join the Federation. Two heads are better than one, for a double pile driver. <coughs> Spawn two face uh, warriors, six infantry divisions with demo and fire team support, and los mocas. Oh, that's cool. We got all sorts of different units here, though, which is not cool. But we're doing the charity smackdown. <coughs> One thing that I hate though um, is uh, how long these focuses take. Shoot on the great ring. Los Mocas was a fire this afternoon. When local crowd favorite Chavo Guerrero faced a Royal Rumble grudge match against 15 foes in succession. The towering titan lasted over half an hour in the ring before finally succumbing to a tag team close spin that sent him in the, out of the ring. While ultimately losing, Chavo's legendary stamina has won him even more fans in the ring today, and he promises to make this next bout last an hour as soon as his broken arms heal. I hate those freaks. Ooh, wounded for 90 days. Oh boy. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the charity, Winter Charity Smackdown. In the left corner, you have the gracious and honorable good Dr. Wagner. In the right corner is the big glitch himself, El Santo. Nice. And after that, I'll rebuild the arena. With all the matches happening between the various tribes, it's become a dream of many. And the Federation rebuild the pre war lucha arena in Los Mocas. A symbol of pride in Mexican heritage in the old world, it could serve much the same purpose in ours. That's in. It'd be really, really cool. War of the Mask. Oh boy. Ooh. The Free Fighters owe their existence to the cartels, and as it is their evil ways that brought us together to fight back. Interesting. We can't get beyond that, but whatever. Um, where our initial level is, and we're currently getting 1.3 political power every day, but no, uh, we want more, so we're on 2.48. We have actually a little more warsport now, finally, too. Because we're trying to improve our country management. Oh, and, uh,. Everyone else is here now. So we have the followers here. You know, whatever. Um, yeah, well, that's better. Stability is okay. Uh, research speed's okay. We don't need more uh, water right now either. Um, actually, we're using melee stuff, so we'll go slashing melee stuff. That would be a good. Uh, what else do we have? This one? Yeah, I think it's worth it. So we're going to War of the Pack eventually. Or War of the Mass, my bad. Uh, the Smiths of Los Mocas. The metal workers. Uh, Los Mocas are known throughout Mexico as the best of the craft. People are capable of forging machetes that can cut through a jungle like butter, or knives can gut efficient seconds. Provided these, providing these skilled workers with actual workshops to hone their craft would be a boon for military industry. Also, I did, I think, just blow through four. Um, we're led by Mil Musk again. Uh, that's pretty normal. Uh, normal. Um, I always choose this one. I always lose. We're gonna go with the Blue Demon. The Bazaar. El Bazar de los Calinas is a grand market in the center of town where traders from across the Gulf Coast come to do business with the free fighters and each other. This local location presents an excellent opportunity for civilian industry, as well as for easy access to diverse ranges of goods. The Battle of Paragons. The traditional final conflict and step in getting true membership into the Federation is to be a wrestling match between the leader of the Federation and the leader of the tribe itself. I have a brief discussion is agree that El Santo shall do battle with Dr. Wagner at a highly publicized and advertised charity event, the gains of which are going to be used to help fund the recently finished hospital. The conflict between these two can be considered lucha at its purest, lacking any underhanded tactics and with numerous moments of incredible respect between the two. The result of this conflict is inevitable, however, as Dr. Wagner is far less a warrior than his contemporary in the heroic El Santo, who wins the match by helping his bean foe stand. Can you smell what the doc is cooking? Oh, nice yes, logistics. Look at that one. I really don't care, do I? Well, that's what it says. Or do it, do you? So you're maxed out on all sorts of divisions here. Medicinus. Uh, we don't need chem companies, honestly, for this campaign. We're doing pretty well on them already. Um, I like these two, Shadow Warriors, because that would cost a lot to throw everything on there. Um, we don't have special forces yet, even so. Go and do that one. Make it cheaper for us because we can. We must do that one. Why not? Payload gliders. Nice. And we're about the region and the great rematch. The last tres mascaras have gathered in Los Mocas. This time there will be no time. The stakes are set. The fighters are ready. Ladies and gentlemen, get ready to rumble. And then fishing harbors. 
For a coastal nation, fishing is vital to the wealth and health of its people. Any commission fishing yards also have to knock on the effect of being able to house and create combat vessels in a hard time. Nice. Piece of war, not much else we can really do here. Uh, we can get better consumer goods, but I don't want her our stability. That's our battalion, are nice. Oh. Uh, I don't know, stamina? I'm not sure it really matters at this point anymore, anyways. Uh, we can scavenge vehicles. Decimation's nice. And we'll go wedge formations. Because we wedge our way into beating up enemies and people that we don't like. Sort of ish. Demo teams, fire teams, good stuff. Infantry and infantry. Good stuff. And yeah, we're going to become a Shadow Warrior. Nice. And the Great Ohri match. So we read all three of these. We'll get down there too. Um, awakened Foundries. For far too long have the foundries of the old world laid dormant. Used for nothing more than a hideout for squatters and camp pushers with refurbishment and refitting. Once more, we can use these great steelworks to put arms in the hands of our people. Trade with Rio. While the relatively similar disposition of the Rio Grande Republic makes trade with them viable, our proximity to them makes it profitable and naval base. Uh, though the Lucha of the Wars of the Old were not known for their art seamanship, for the Lucha f for the Free Fighters, to have any f real ambition outside of borders, it needs the means to create and maintain a capable navy. Yeah, we can do war propaganda. We can use more war sport. I mean, it helps with world tension going up, so let's go and do that anyways. Uh, let me get that one too. That's right, it begins. Uh, where is this one for? Let's get it a rumble and see what happens. The bell's rung and the first round begins. All five, all three fighters came to gain an early upper hand in a circle of the center of the ring, waiting for the first blow to be struck. Demonio Azul sees an opportunity and striking first. Uh, plays the wild card, because why not? Uh, so, ooh, what do we get? Nothing. The bell rings, the first round is over, and the fury of the battle. El Santo decided to play the round safe. Uh, with everything to play for and one's life and limb to lose, unfortunately, a smart and tactical decision came up against <clears throat> the twin insanities of Demonio, Azul, and Mascaras, who were prepared to dazzle the crowd and deck El Santo. Uh, this combined by a flurry of somersaults and uh, jump ropes. Um, El Santo was unprepared for the brutal combo die kick that was uh, delivered right to his Mascara. Losing the round and most of his remaining teeth. Oh god. After returning to the corners for a brief interlude, the three, three fighters are ready to take the fight to the second round. Demonio Azul weighs his options and, uh. Play the ring instead of prepared to faint. Yeah, I'll go with that one for now. Match three. Round three. I think I just read this one. It's another little smash. Does this have any effect when we do the final, the final bell for match six? Um. I think I ran this one before. Oh, Victor. No one! You can't get El Santo! What the heck? Okay, so now we have the great rematch going on now. There goes a battle for Hoover Dam, but we don't care about that. Alright, so good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Mr. New Vegas with a special radio broadcast for you tonight. Coming live from the Los Mocos Ring comes the greatest wrestling match of the apocalypse. The atmosphere in the ring is tense enough to cut through steel as the three luchadoras contain for the title of leader of the three. Three fighters face each other. The blue demon is first to make a move, searching out a weak point in Mil Mascara's defenses. The green giant is about to retaliate, or catching the demon in a ground slam before El Santo leaps onto his back with a somersault. Fearing a repeat of the first match, Mil Mascara quickly disengages before the blue demon reveals a secret weapon. Sliding into the ring, he returns to the fray holding a Robco Titanium folding chair and begins to wail on Mascara's before El Santo uh, lands a swift blow on them. Both. This battle is one for the ages, folks. The dust of the ring is getting too thick to see, but as the bell rings for the first round, we can confirm we have an elimination. Blue Demon's eliminated. El Santo's eliminated. Mel Mascara's eliminated. Blue Demon's gone, because I want to make sure we don't get him. Mm. War of the Mask. The remaining of the great match are the Giant and the Saint. With the Demon defeated, all that stands in the way of Mel Mascara's and victory is the Saint himself. El Santo ducks and weaves, not, uh, e with not even the Green Giant's famed mobility able to match him. Eventually, each fighter finds themselves on the ropes facing each other, and with a fearsome yell, they launch themselves into the air. Standing tall over his opponent, the champion raises his fist, and El Santo wins. Wait, wait. 
Mel Mascaris wins anyways. Uh I did do Optimus training earlier. Well, I guess Mill Mascaris wins no matter what. Because even El Santo had the one for a Mel Manto. Uh, no, not El Santo, but Mel Mascaris wins no matter what. So after years of contested leadership, Mel Mascaris has emerged from the final Lucho Rumble as uncontested ruler of the Free Fighters. While his opponents recuperate, shattered by the devastating loss, Mel Mascaris is wasting no time in restructuring the leadership of the Federation in his image, this time permanently. Por la libertad, por pelear, por Mel Mascaris. What does that mean? Oh! El Santo won! Those who fight for a righteous gods with righteous means are the exception to Mexico. America, perhaps even the entire world. El Santo is the exception to these exceptions. El Santo saw the rise of the cartels, how they would tread on all those underneath them, and wept. These tears would become a fire within his heart to one day liberate all those under the boot of the cartels and return to the days of peace stolen by the de evil. I, uh, yeah, I guess, yeah. We did it! And the honor of the saint. I think we didn't hear this one earlier. So, this again, please go ahead. Legacy of the Martyr. Oh, look at that. It's not enough to remember your people's heroes. You must catalog their great feats in every way you can, tell their stories, and teach them morals to their are young, and make sure your men fight with the spirit of these titans and the champion of the people. Following the great rematch, El Santo has once again taken his place at the head of the Federation. Nice. Um, oh, we can't do these ones. Oh. So I guess, uh, technically, I should wait to do that one then, I guess. Uh, because the matches keep going on, and then we can do all this stuff too. Uh, dubious shipments. Battles are fought with honor, but the preparation is fair game. After all, what greater just is there than to defeat the corrupt and oppressive regime to the slend of the weapons of their own design? Superior slammers. To a luchador brain rustler, a rocket sludge may, may at first appear to be the peak of human weaponry, but recent discoveries in the field of powered super that can punch through a skull have shaken the scientific community to its core. The Terror of La Paz. The bandits of La Paz are cut from the same cloth as the cartel scum that butchered our people in the legends of old. I really wish to suplex these wretched criminals under the ocean. It would first be advantageous to develop a navy worth of challenging their smuggling craft. Red Pepper's Trawlers. For the purpose of naval action, pre-war fishing trawlers make for a hole that has enough bulk to be pushed around, enough deck to be put guns on, and enough engine power to outpace less consistent forms of propulsion. With some reverse engineering, it wouldn't be hard to design a hole that takes advantage of these uh, traits. Which sound really good, so... I'm going to do these next time. But I think I'm going to go back and do this before uh, we do the Champion of the People. Following the Great Rematch, El Santos once again taking his place as the head of the Federation. I want to make sure we get all this stuff done. But, uh, like I said earlier, it's kind of disappointing that it takes so long to get through everything with the 60 day focuses. But regardless, hope you enjoyed the first episode of us playing as the Free Fighters. Uh, subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below. Uh, consider leaving a like. And I'll see you tomorrow to see what we can do with the three luchadores. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.